Okay, so we're all here. You ready? I'm ready. If okay. You're ready. All right. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Um, there's a lot of faces in here I don't recognize, so welcome. For those of you who don't know uh, me, I'm Jacina Hazlett. I'm the director of Ollie at WVU, and Elaine Schultes is with us from WVU Retirees, as well as Bev Kerr, your board president or something like that, right? <laughs> um, thank you for coming to this joint Colette presentation this morning. There are flyers on at the back for the trips that we're going to be talking about. Also, when you came in, if you did not sign in, please do so. Um, Ollie is, if, if for those of you unfamiliar with it, Ollie is, we are kind of part of a national organization, and I have to report numbers every year that includes numbers of non-members that we serve. So if you would please sign in, let me know if you're an Ollie member or not. That way I can make sure I get that correct information to our national oversight. Um, but you're absolutely welcome here. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Matthew. Oh, please turn off your cell phones or turn off the ringers on your cell phones. This is the important stuff, right? This is the important stuff. Sometimes I'm um, the other actually, so am I. I'm thinking I need to turn mine down. And if you're on Zoom, please keep yourself muted unless you're actually like actively asking a question, just in case your dog barks or the doorbell rings or something like that. So, um, and how did you want to handle questions? Do you want them to just go ahead and pipe up whenever they have a question? So or pause. After, we have a lot of tours we're covering today because this is a joint partnership with the WVU retirees as well as Ollie. Ollie. Yeah. We're going to be covering five different tours that will span all over 2024. So for those of you on Zoom, if you would like to put your questions in the chat box, okay. we'll peek over from time to time and see what the questions are. And at the end of each tour that we're going to be covering, I'll pause and we can ask some questions while they're fresh on your mind before we dive into the next Great. Sure. Great. Okay. And for those of you in the room, if you have a question, please use a microphone. I'm going to put this one back up here and there should be another, there's another one right here. Please use the microphone and Matt, if they don't, if you would repeat the question, that way people on Zoom can hear you. Okay. And people in the room who might have difficulty hearing. Okay. It's all, technology nowadays, it's right? all yours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me today, both the West Virginia retirees, WVU retirees, and the WVU OLLI program. My name's Matthew DeRamo, and I've been probably representing Colette for the past almost 16 years. It'll be 16 years, January 1st, which I'm really excited about, hitting those milestones with, uh, with my company. I'm born and raised in Western Pennsylvania. I grew up in uh, Aliquippa, out by the uh, you know Pittsburgh airport. I currently reside right by the Pittsburgh airport in Moon Township. And I cover all of Western and Central Pennsylvania for Colette and really Morgantown, Willing, and uh, Weirton, West Virginia. Then my colleague covers the remainder of West Virginia. I'm a father of two. I have two little boys, Mateo, who is eight, and Rocco, who is four. We have a little dog, Romeo, who's, I think, 79 right now. So, uh, and my beautiful wife, Ashley, uh, of 10 years. So, um, I'm very excited to be here today. You know, I've never thought in a million years, you know, after graduating school that I'd have an opportunity to, uh, I went to school for labor relations and HR. And before you know it, I got into sales, selling technology, and that was okay at the time. And, but I'm not really a techie. That's why it's nice to have some help behind me over here to get all this set up. And I found this opportunity and it's just been a blessing, uh, in those 16 years, I've had an opportunity to travel uh, to over 55 different countries and uh, get an opportunity to explore the world and, you know, have some unique conversations with locals and taste the local cuisine and, you know, see the amazing architecture. And, you know, it really makes the world a little bit smaller, makes you a little bit more sympathetic to, you know, some of the things that are going out there. So I always like the food of the region, that's for sure, and the spirits of the region. For those of you who are unfamiliar with who Colette is, uh, show of hands. Anyone here travel with Colette before? Ah, well, we must have done something right then to keep you coming back once again. Uh, for those of you who are coming and you know seeing us once again, we really appreciate it. For those who are unfamiliar with us, we're uh, the oldest tour operator in North America. Uh, we're turning 106 years old this month. So we were founded in 1918. We just launched our 106th season. My video is 105th season. We uh, haven't uploaded the new video yet, uh, but we are based in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. So we are a New England-based 
family owned company. We are debt free as a company. Uh, we're on target for 2024 to be about a half a billion dollar family owned company, which is crazy because we ended 2020 at $12 million. And we are booming as a organization right now. Uh, we had some individuals that were signed up pre-COVID with Colette and their tours were affected because of the situations that we are dealing with. I always like to set the proper expectation of how we handled it. Uh, not every company did the right thing, in our opinion, to uh, to the pandemic. But if you were registered on a Colette tour and you had a deposit and final payment, we gave you choices. We gave you a choice to keep your money on the books, which we really wanted as a company. Um, and we would have given you a choice to move your booking to a later date. And we did that. We had people that moved from an April date of 2020 to November, to April of 21, to November of 21, to April of 22. I think some of us may have been a part of that as well. Um, however, if you did not want to go through that, it was one small phone call to either your group leader like Jacina uh, or Colette and say, I just want my money back. And we refunded 100% of your money, including your travel protection without any questions asked. So we did not keep our clients' money. We ended up refunding a little shy of $200 million of our clients' money. So you know, if you're doing the math, we were roughly around a quarter of a billion dollars uh, in 2020. We've doubled in size since COVID. It is crazy. We are booming as a company. Travel is busy. Every airplane is full. Every motor coach is full. Every bus is full. Every it, It's just nuts right now. Um, so off-season travel is, is a really good thing at this point in time to get away from the crowd. So just something to expect. I always tell everyone, pack your patience if you're traveling because you're not the only ones traveling right now. Pretty much the rest of the world is as well. So you know a little history of our company, how, how long we are in business, 106 years. Uh, we basically started out as a small motor coach company offering like Jitney tours to Florida and fall foliage trips to you know New England, Cherry Blossom festivals to DC and grew into an international tour company. We have 182 programs across all seven continents in over 62 different countries, but we have different travel styles. And I always like to emphasize that to give people an understanding of what to expect on these tours. One of our travel styles is we have riverboat cruising. We are not a riverboat cruise operator, but we do have some riverboat cruisings on the Danube, on the Rhine, on the Nile River. Um, we have some ocean cruising doing Alaska on uh, with Holland America. We do the Galapagos on some smaller yachts, Croatia on some smaller yachts. We have some faith-based tours that if you want to have a more spiritual journey, we have those. We have single hotel stays, which we call spotlight tours. Spotlight tours are you know one hotel and every day you spoke out and see a different destination. Uh, and then we have our classic brand. Our classic brand is what you normally would think of with a big motor coach company. You're going to fly over to your destination, maybe domestically or abroad, and you're going to be traveling on a big luxury motor coach that usually holds somewhere between 52 and 56 passengers. We limit those coaches to 44 travelers. So we don't sell every single seat on a coach. We found when I started here back in 2008, we originally had 54 travelers, and then it went to 52 maximum, then 50, then 48, 46, and now we've limited it 44. That's where we found kind of the right mix of profitability and client satisfaction, because no one wants to be on a bus where every single seat is kind of taken. So we limit it to 44, and we rotate seats daily. All of the tours that we are presenting on today are all of our classic touring style that go up to 44 travelers. We do have some small group explorations, which travel with 16 to 24 travelers. They're a little bit, um, you know, a little bit of a premium product and you get to stay in little different unique properties and off the beaten path kind of touring. But all the tours today are what we call our classic style. I'm gonna take a break and play a cool little video. This was our 105th season and uh, we're turning a new page.
right. I'll tell you what there is to see. Oh, there is nothing to see. Let's wake up Let's in a brand, brand, brand new place. Pick up everything we leave. Is it possible? It's more beautiful than we dream. Is it possible? travel i've uh even though i've been traveling around the world i'm adding some few more countries to my list here upcoming we're going to morocco in december for a sales meeting and now it's more of a philanthropic endeavor because we're going to be having some uh uh helping of building back from the recent earthquake that was there uh i'm adding hawaii which i've never been to which i'm excited to in 2024 and japan i think we spoke about i'm heading in june and thailand so I get to mark off of some new destinations. I get so excited to watch these videos. But uh, our product philosophy, just to give you an understanding of what separates Colette from some of the competition is really how we design our tours. You know, there's a lot that separates us. But one of the things that I always like to emphasize is we don't like to pack and unpack every single day. Sometimes you see these itineraries and it's one night, one night, one night, two, one, one, one. And that is not the way that you want to go touring. You don't want to live out of your suitcase every single day. So what you'll notice on a lot of these tours are several multiple night stays in your journey. Two nights, two nights, one, two. You know, we don't want to have you packing and unpacking. We also like to have a lot included in our tours. However, if you have too much included, you'll come back and be like, oh, I need a vacation from my vacation. This tour is exhausting. So we do a good job of balancing that out with the free time. We want to give you time for independent exploration. But if we give you too much free time, then you want to know what the heck do we pay for? So we really do that good job of balancing out the two included activities. We are a four, four and a half star tour operator. We are not the Ritz Carlton. We're not the Four Seasons. We don't pretend to be. We're a solid kind of four-star tour operator. We list all of our properties. So if you look at our flyers, either online or in the brochures, you will see that all the properties are listed. So you could go to TripAdvisor. You can go to Google, Google to properties. Sometimes they change periodically, um, but we're very proud. We say they're uh, strategically located hotels. Now, typically, if you are touring, you know, the heart of, uh, we're in the French Magnifique, which we're presenting on today, and you're in Paris, you are in the heart of Paris. But there are times where we're scheduled to be out in the countryside hotel, which means you're not really centrally located. You're staying at a chateau in the, uh, in the countryside. So something to think about when you're looking at different tour companies, what properties are they staying at? Where are they located? What amenities do they include? We have breakfast daily on all of our tours. 
The breakfasts are standard international style buffet breakfast, hot eggs, meats, cheeses, coffee, tea, fruit, juice, cereal. Not everyone eats a big breakfast, a big lunch, and a big dinner. So lunchtime is usually a time for some independent exploration where you can go out and explore on your own. The tour manager may say, ladies and gentlemen, it's now 1130. Let's meet back at the motor coach at quarter after one. We're going to meet back here. However, there's some great little cafes over here. If you want to grab a small little bite to eat, you know, there's a great museum down here that's not part of our tour, but it costs you know, $10 to get in, or if you want to do some shopping, a little retail therapy, you can go to these different stores. So lunchtime is some time for some independent exploration. Plus half the time people are leaving our breakfast with muffins shoved in this pocket and bananas shoved over here. And we get yelled at from our, uh, from our companies. Uh, you'll have a tour manager every step of the way that will greet you upon arrival in your destination. And he or she will be there to entertain you to educate you, make sure your hotels are ready, your buses are on time, your meals are ready. They're really your travel confidant throughout the entire program. So this is truly thoughtless travel. All you have to do is wake up every day and go with the flow. But I always do suggest have a plan. Have a plan for some of the free time. If you see dinners on your own in a particular town, maybe go and look up, hey, good places to eat and, uh, you know, in, in Paris on your free night or wherever you may be. Um, you may have uh, local guides hop on your bus too. So mainly in Europe, by law, if you're traveling around certain cities in Europe, we will have step-on guides that hop onto your motor coach. Hello, my name is Michael. Let me take you on a tour of Reykjavik, Iceland and do a little locally guided program of uh, Reykjavik. Domestically, we don't have as many step-on guides. What's really nice about this program is we have um, we, it's an air inclusive package. All of these tours are designed for air inclusive. And when you are working with Ollie or the retirees group, we are also going to include hometown pickup. We're going to pick you up here. We're going to take you to the Pittsburgh airport. We will pick you up at the Pittsburgh airport and bring you home. So you don't have to get yourselves to the airport. On the Ollie programs, we also priced out air from Charleston, um, West Virginia. So you would be able to meet at a design location in Charleston. We'll take you to the Jaeger Airport. We'll pick you up and bring you home. And we also have a cost for the flight for the Ollie programs for that as well. And even the non-Ollie programs for the retirees, they can always get a quote from Colette for that. So that is super nice being able to get transported from here to the airport. I would take you with me on my way back home, but your trips may not be for a little while. So uh, embrace the freedom of touring. I mentioned to everyone that you know, we have breakfast daily. We may have a couple lunches included. If lunches are included, it's usually around an activity. We're visiting maybe a little vineyard or countryside estate where they're, you know, feeding us some wine and we have to fill our bellies up with that. We have the hotel to hotel baggage handling. So although we are moving properties every couple of days, every other day, um, you don't have to schlep your own luggage. All you do is push your luggage out into the hallway. Our bellhops will come by. They pick your luggage up. They'll take them to the next hotel. And you don't have to worry about getting your bags to and from. Um, so there's a lot of inclusiveness on this particular uh, set of tours over here. So, you know, hometown pickup, that's very important. Keep in mind on any of these tours, even though they are group trips, if you want to go in early or stay later when you're making your reservation, let the Ollie program or the retirees program or Colette know, hey, by the way, I want to go in a day earlier. I want to stay a day later. Even if you choose to do a pre-tour or post-tour, um, we will still handle the transfers for you. So say we have 15 people going to America's Music City and you want to go into New Orleans a day or two early. We can quote that out for you, or rearrange your airfare, and we would still pick you up at the airport and pick you up here, take you to the airport. Uh, and then two days later, they will pick up the group and bring them to the airport. So you can really kind of make these trips your own. Before we dive into the first itinerary, I'm going to play a short little video that I just find hysterical because it kind of resonates with something my father once told me. Morning, kids. Good morning, Mom, kids. Mom, Dad here. Have an hour. Have an hour. First cup of coffee here in, here in Lawrence, Italy. Lawrence, Italy. That's right. That's right. Our inheritance. Our inheritance. Our cup. Our cup. We drink it in one cup at a time. All, time. All, over, All the over the place. We managed to do it from a long ways away this time. time. In Florence. In Florence. Italy. 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 We have a little bit of an echo. you, kids. We love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. I came across this couple on TikTok. I sleep in hotel rooms like 100 nights a year, and I have to pass the time sometimes instead of working all the time. 
And this couple, everything they do with their life, they videotape and just throw it in their kid's face. And reminding me of my dad, my dad told me his last check is going to bounce. I said, make it a small check, please make it a small check. So um, the first tour that we're going to start with is going to be traveling April 21st through the 28th of 2024. Perfect time of year to go to these cities. You don't want to go too late in the year, sometimes too early in the year. It's not as comfortable walking around. I think the springtime for New Orleans, Memphis, and Nashville is absolutely perfect. Your itinerary to glance, this is an eight-day tour. Uh, it includes 10 meals. You're going to have breakfast daily. You're going to have one lunch, and you have two dinners included. We do have some travel days in between the two, the three cities over here. So our tour will begin with three nights in New Orleans, one of my favorite cities in all of North America. I just absolutely love the cuisine in New Orleans. But this tour is immersed with music culture of America. So you're going to spend three days in New Orleans. We are then going to transfer up to Memphis. That is about a five and a half, six hour day. We're going to stop along the way. We never travel for usually longer than about two hours without stopping, using the restroom, stretching out, grabbing some snacks along the way. We're going to spend two nights in Memphis. And our hotel in New Orleans is right near Bourbon Street. So you're right on Bourbon Street. We are in Nashville for two nights. We're staying at the Opryland Hotel in Nashville, which is also a highlight for a lot of people. So all of these tours start with a flight. So we will meet at the Pittsburgh airport or in Charleston, or if you have friends or family coming from other parts of the country, they can join you on this trip. They would just need to let Colette know where they are flying from, and we will price that out for them. So upon arrival into New Orleans, you're going to step back in time on a in this beautiful cultural getaway that uh, opens up in New Orleans. It's the jazz capital of the world, which is part of the Music City. Another nickname for New Orleans is the Crescent City, referred to as the Mississippi River running right through the town. The city has preserved through many floods over the years. And in the city, you can find a combination of line, uh, lineages between French, Spanish, Creole, Caribbean, Cajun. That's why they have that Cajun cuisine down in New Orleans. So day number one, we are going to arrive. We don't really have anything included that day. It's more of a day of travel. Day number two, we're going to uh, wake up and we're going to start our touring. We're going to give you a choice on tour. This is not an option. These are choices. There's a difference. Options are paid activities where you have to pay out of pocket during your free time if you want to do something. We don't have too many options as a company. A lot of tour operators, it's 50 for this and 100 for this and 150 for that and 70 where you feel like you're being nickel and dimed all the time. We don't have a lot of optional tours on our programs, but what we do have sometimes are what we call choices. We're giving people an opportunity to choose how they want to tour that that particular day. And most of the time, our choices have some different activity levels. So for instance, your first choice is a walking tour through the French Quarter, seeing all of the highlights of the French Quarter. Or if you don't feel like being on your legs all day long, you can do a panoramic tour of New Orleans, which means you are going to be on a motor coach. And we will stop for photo opportunities, but mainly it's a bus tour of New Orleans. Regardless of what you choose, we're going to bring everyone together for a wonderful welcome dinner. Like I mentioned before, these tours go up to 44 travelers. The next day, we're heading out to the swamps. We're going to take you on a narrated swamp cruise, maybe get an opportunity to see some of the crocodiles come out from the, uh, the swamps. But this is really cool. This is part of their culture, you know, that Cajun culture living in the, uh, in the swamps. After the swamp tour, we're going to take you behind the scenes. We're going to visit Mardi Gras World. Mardi Gras is part of the New Orleans culture, and you get an opportunity to see how the floats are made and listen to all the different stories behind the scene for, uh, for Mardi Gras. You'll even have a chance to eat the King's Cake. The King's Cake is eaten between King's Day, which is January 6th, and the Tuesday before Mardi Gras, known as Fat Tuesday. And this is one of the New Orleans staples over here, and it's usually, and sometimes they'll put little, you know, souvenirs in the middle of the cake, so you got to watch what you're Watch what you're eating over here sometimes for good luck. Sometimes it's a coin. Sometimes it's a little a little plastic figurine. So don't eat it too fast. That's for sure. But later on that day, we're going to meet our fellow travelers uh, and do a, uh, a little uh, tour around Bourbon Street. So we're going to have a wonderful dinner on our own. Then we're going to meet again. And the reason we're meeting is we're going to have a night out of music at a local jazz uh, club and we're going to have you know some singing some dancing listening to some music and enjoying ourselves 
Day number four, we're packing our bags and we're now leaving New Orleans. We're going to be traveling north to Memphis, which is the birthplace of blues and rock and roll and soul. And where the Mississippi River cuts right through this famous city and the city boasts uh, savory barbecues, uh, incomparable music, historical roots, musical legends. When we get there, we're staying at the iconic, uh, uh, just steps away from the iconic Graceland. It's actually a Graceland hotel, but it's not part of the uh, part of the property over here. So we are going to give you an option to tour the Graceland uh, hotel. So if you want to kind of go back and learn a little bit more about Elvis and the Jailhouse Rock, you can walk around Graceland and uh, and enjoy. Uh, a lot of the memorabilia that uh, that is in Graceland. However, if you choose, you can also choose to do a civil rights tour around Graceland as well. And you can learn all about the route that Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, marched uh, here in Memphis. So these are choices. You can learn a little bit more about music, learn a bit, little bit more about the civil rights movement. Regardless of what we do, we're going to head out on Bill Street. We're going to have a wonderful lunch. And then we're going to listen to some more music at the House of Blues. We're going to give you an opportunity to uh, um, make our way to the Memphis uh, Musical History Tour. Now, this is an option. You're going to have free time in Memphis. So if you choose, you can do a little uh, tour of the music uh, Memphis Music History Tour. The next day, we're going to be making our way to the music capital of the world, which is Nashville, Tennessee. It's absolutely booming. The city that features a dynamic modern food scene, friendly natives, and just move back here for the locals over here. This is where we get to uh, um, Nashville. We're going to visit the uh, the West Delta Heritage Center, and we'll revel in the true Southern experience to celebrate the music, the history, and the beauty of the Tennessee Delta. We're going to take you to the uh, Queen of Rock. We'll listen to a little bit of Tina Turner over here at the uh, Delta Heritage Center. We're going to give you an opportunity to have a performance and a tour of the Rhinum uh, Auditorium, the original home of the Grand Old Opry. We're going to have a performance at the Opryland, which is a really cool place. And then what's nice about that is you just walk back to your room because we're staying at the Opryland Hotel, which is absolutely gorgeous property. Now, the Opryland Hotel is not in right downtown Broadway in Nashville, so it is a little bit out of uh, the downtown area of Nashville. So if you wanted to make your way to Broadway, a short little Uber ride or taxi ride will uh, take you there in the evening hours. But it is a beautiful, beautiful property. Um, day number seven, we're going to continue with the music scene. Jazz, you've had, you know, Graceland Hotel, Rock and Roll, uh, our uh, Country Music Hall of Fame is where we're going to be uh, visiting here. So while you're there, you can see all of the different platinum and gold albums that are sitting on the wall. We're going to take you to RCA Studio B to kind of get an insider's look at the, you know, first recordings of country music. So you can see how this tour is just filled with American heritage and history of the music scene. We will end this tour with a little visit to the Goo Goo Candy Shop, a historic uh, little uh, place in outside of Nashville, and get a little candy treat and have a farewell dinner. So it's a wonderful tour. It's eight days. It's seven nights, three nights in New Orleans, two nights in Memphis, and two nights in Nashville. Um, you can find these tours. I put them in the chat box. Uh, you can find these tours online at the uh, Oli website, or you can uh, find the brochures in the back for, uh, for the uh, West Virginia University uh, retirees. Um, basically, how you can book. You can either contact Colette to book these trips. Or you could go online. When you go online, it'll have all the details of the tour. You will see in the top left-hand corner, a little sign up now button. When you sign up, it'll let Colette know that you've registered. It'll let the West Virginia retirees know that you registered so that everyone is in coordination. This tour is land, air, taxes, fees, transfers from here to the hotel or airport, airports to the hotel. It has your breakfast daily. You have... Uh, two lunches or one lunch and two dinners included in here. So you have some time to go out and spread your wings a little bit. The regular rate of the trip is $35.99 per person double. Uh, the single rate is $44.99 per person single. And there's a triple rate of $35.49. If you book before October 21st, you will save $100 off per person, bringing that rate to $34.99 per person double. And regardless 
of when after you make your initial deposit, you don't have to make your final payment until 60 days prior to departure. So we won't ask for another penny. You can pay by check, you can pay by credit card. There's no extra fees for paying by credit card and there are no savings paying by check. You know, we basically put the price out there and accept any form of payment that you have. We do have an optional travel protection, which we'll cover at the end of the uh, complete presentation. But our travel protection is land, uh, canceled for any reason. It's optional. It's $349 per person, but it's canceled for any reason at any time up until the day prior to departure. And you get 100% of your money back less the $349, which is the premium for the insurance. We call it a bad hair day policy. Literally, you have a bad haircut, you get all of your money back less the cost of the insurance which is very rare. Most of the time it has to be for a medical reason or you have to show documentation and file out reports. It's a phone call. I can't travel, boom, we give you all your money back. If you cancel after, um, or if you, uh, I'll take a step back. My slides are a little different because I'm doing so many tours. Um, if you, not only to protect you while you're on tour, uh, before tour, it protects you while you're on tour. So it protects you for travel insurance, trip interruption, travel delays, illness, accident, theft, emergency evacuation, lost luggage. It's a secondary health insurance. So normally when you leave the country, your insurance may not kick in, you know, to, uh, to cover you domestically. Usually your insurance will cover you wherever you're at throughout the United States. But this helps kind of pick up any extra costs that are associated with anything that may happen to you while you are on tour. And, um, if you your deposit for this trip is six hundred and ninety eight dollars for the tour, and then it's three hundred and forty nine dollars for the insurance, which is six ninety eight one thousand forty seven to hold your spot on the trip. Now the next tour we're pre uh, presenting here today is our Pacific Northwest in California tour. This tour always does well for us historically. Once again, I think it's a great time of year to travel in the Pacific Northwest in that early part of uh, and mid part of June uh, before all of the busy crowds start coming for the summertime. It's June 16th through the 24th. Very moderate temperatures throughout this entire tour uh, down the, uh, down the um, coastline. Uh, this tour is eight days. It's 11 meals. You have seven breakfasts, two lunches, and two dinners. So this tour starts out in Seattle, Washington for a one-night stay. I always, if you're looking at this tour, I highly recommend doing our Seattle pre-tour extension, which adds an extra day into Seattle. You get a uh, kind of a hop on, hop off pass. You get a train pass. There's entries into the Chihuly Glass Factory, the Space Needle. So there's a lot to do in Seattle. We're basically using it as a gateway because it's easier to fly into for the coverage into uh, the Pacific Northwest. But we're going to do one night in Seattle. From there, we're traveling southbound. Now, think of how these tours are designed. We could easily start this tour off in San Francisco and go north. We like going south. And the reason why is we're on the Pacific Coast Highway. We're traveling south. We're closer to the coastline. So you get those prettier views of the coastline. For many people, it's the first time they've seen the Pacific Ocean. So from Seattle, we're going to then make our way down through Oregon. We're going to do two nights in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. We're going to visit the Mount St. Helens Visitor Center, the Columbia River Gorge, um, Monmouth Falls, which is absolutely gorgeous. We're going to spend one night in uh, the North Bend area of, uh, of Oregon. Then we're going to head down into Eureka, California, which is really well known for their, uh, um, you know, their old logging industry, and then end in San Francisco, California. So day number one, once again, is just a day of travel. It's going to be about a five-hour flight to get you from Pittsburgh to Seattle. Uh, when you arrive into Seattle, you're going to uh, your tour is going to begin with an overnight stay. Seattle's dubbed the Emerald City, and it's known for its lush green surroundings. It's also situated right off the west coast of Washington State. This evening, we're going to get together for a wonderful welcome dinner to bring that group together for the very first time and dive into a lot of uh, Seattle. Uh, culture and heritage through the cuisine in Seattle. A lot of seafood, a lot of fish. But keep in mind, our dinners for all of the tours are not eat off a full menu. They're more of a select menu. You'll have a choice of a beef, a chicken, a vegetarian, a seafood option. If you have any allergies like gluten or vegetarian, or uh, I guess vegetarian is not an allergy, gluten or peanut, or if you have any dietary 
restrictions such as you know vegetarian or uh, vegan, we can make those accommodations for you. So let us know ahead of time so we can better be prepared for you. Uh, Seattle uh, is the founding city of the International Starbucks Company. No one's familiar with that. It was founded in 1851 is what the city was founded. Beautiful seafood and fish all along the way. In fact, you'll learn a little bit more about that when we go to Pike's Place and you see them tossing the fish throughout the uh, marketplace. So the next morning, we're going to get up and we're going to have a tour around Seattle. And we're going to see all the colorful waterfront areas, the historic Pioneer Square. Like I mentioned before, we're going to make our way down to the uh, Pike's Place Market. We're going to have a little locally guided tour of Seattle. So we're going to spend a day in Seattle. From there, we're going to cross over by ferry into uh, the Puget Sound and make our way and see the beautiful skyline of Seattle over here. From there, we're going to head down to the Mount St. Helens uh, Visitor Center, and we're going to stop in the town of Olympia. And you can learn a little bit about the eruption that took place in 1980. Um, there was a thousand feet, you know, up blew a thousand feet off the top of Mount St. Helens, spewed magma and lava uh, over the surrounding areas. It's one of the most active volcanoes uh, in the United States. So we'll learn a little bit more about uh, the uh, uh, Mount St. Helens. We'll also learn a little bit more about the culture of the heritage of the Pacific Northwest there at the uh, visitor center. You get these beautiful views uh, when we're uh, traveling through Oregon. It's Mount Hood. So hopefully you have days like this where you see the, the crest of, uh, of Mount Hood. So next day, it's day number three, we're going to drive along Mount Hood and see the lush Columbia River Gorge, uh, taking that unforgettable view of Mount Hood and the Cascade Mountains. Uh, my colleagues, our vice president lives here in, uh, in uh, Portland. It's just absolutely gorgeous area. Uh, we're going to visit the Multnomah Falls, which is just spectacular scenery with these beautiful waterfalls that are about 600 feet high that are coming down. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the Columbia River Gorge is 80 miles, and it funnels uh, the Columbia River all the way to the Pacific Northwest uh, or Pacific Ocean. Um, we're in wine region, this whole area. So once we get this far, we're now in wine regions from this part out. So we want to take you to a local vineyard and get a chance to learn a little bit about why that western uh, uh, breeze off the Pacific Ocean and the climate kind of produces some of the best wine in the world. So we're going to take you to a little vineyard, do a little wine tasting, walk you through a beautiful lavender field. And, you know, anytime we give people wine, people are happy. That's usually the case. Uh, the Willamette Valley is really well known for their for their wine. So we're going to travel right through the Willamette Valley. And uh, this is where a lot of our pioneers kind of travel through the Oregon Trail. So you learn a lot of the history, see some beautiful landscapes with the uh, with the lighthouses dotting the landscape over here. This lighthouse is 93 feet tall and it was built in 1872 and it's Oregon's largest lighthouse. We're going to take you to Cobble Beach all along the Pacific uh, coastline. It's not like the Atlantic coast, which you have these long sandy beaches. A lot of the Pacific coast are rocky beaches. So we're going to take you to the colorful uh, Cobble Beach. We're going to stop in a beautiful town of Newport for lunch. It's just kind of a, a chic little uh, town. We're going to give you a chance to go explore. It's a little port city. Uh, we're going to stop. Now, I do like to set the proper expectation. We do stay at a casino. We don't do this too often, but there's not a lot of hotels. So don't lose all your money before you continue on the next day. So when we're in Coos Bay, we're going to stay at the uh, uh, the Mills Casino for a night. Uh, that is not something that's normal for our tours, but it made sense on this tour to break up the drive from uh, from Portland all the way down to uh, to San Francisco. As we continue on, we're going to visit Bandon State National uh, Recreation Area. So you'll take in the beautiful scenery of this rocky shoreline. You can even see this is a famous... Uh, not monument, but a famous site over here. It's called Face Rock. You see the face in the rock over here with the little mouth at the bottom. So a lot of indigenous cultures, uh, you know, named a lot of the uh, the sites over here along the uh, along the coastline. We're going to take a little river cruise on the Rogue River. So we'll do a little river uh, uh, journey to kind of get you behind the scenes of the trails. We're going to take you through the beautiful Redwood Country. I mean, this is a highlight. For a lot of people who have never seen these mammoth trees that date back to biblical times. So we will have a comprehensive tour as we travel through Redwood National Park. So you'll get an opportunity to see these giant trees. I mean, look at this gentleman standing at the bottom of this magnificent tree over here. 
and you'll learn why that climate is the perfect breeding ground for the for the types of trees that have been growing over a thousand plus years. So we'll travel right through Redwood National Park as well, which is pretty cool uh, over here. Then we're going to make our way to San Francisco. We're going to cross over the Golden Gate Bridge, learn about the bridge's uh, design and making. And it's uh, the city by the bay. It's San Francisco, uh, this is Lombard Street. Kind of reminds me of Pittsburgh a little bit. It's one of the world's steepest kind of, uh, you know, uh, traverse streets over here. I imagine going to work every day, kind of traverse and I had to be white knuckle in my wheel every day. So we're going to have, go out to Pier 39. And we're doing a lot of the touristy things uh, around San Francisco to get the highlights uh, of the city. We're going to head and look at all the Georgian homes, head to Chinatown, you know, give you an opportunity to go explore, have some wonderful food experience while we're there as well. If you want to do post night, you can do so in San Francisco. But basically one night in uh, Seattle, I highly, highly recommend a second night in Seattle, two nights in Portland, one night in North Bend, one night in Eureka, and then two nights in San Fran. Uh, we ask you to join us on this trip. Uh, once again, we have that Seattle one night, two day free tour extension, where like I mentioned before, we uh, we give you kind of a pass to go out and traverse it independently, visit the Chihuly Glass Factory, the Space Needle, that's a choice for you. Um, you can find these tours on uh, online on the, on the group webpage. They also should be at the bottom of your flyer if we happen to have flyers for it. As you can see, the sign up now button is right above the Ollie logo over here. The price of this trip is land air taxes and fees, transfers, and all the pricing that I'm giving you is from Pittsburgh. For those of you who may be wanting to travel out of Charleston, sometimes there's a little bit of an upcharge. It's not as big of an airport as the Pittsburgh airport. And the Pittsburgh airport's not very big either, but nevertheless, there's a little bit higher cost traveling out of Charleston. This tour is land air tax and fees at $40.99, for a double, uh, $49.99 for a single, and $4069 for a triple. If you book before December 16th, you will save $100 off per person, which brings the trip down to $39.99 double, $48.99 single, and $39.69 for a triple. Um, if you book before December 16th, the insurance is exactly the same, $349. The deposit is the same, $698 plus your $349 insurance um, to guarantee your spot on this trip. Another very popular tour for our company is the Canadian Maritimes. Once again, great time of year to travel. We're picking not quite the peak season. We're trying to get into a little bit of the shoulder seasons because peak season in the Maritimes mm -hmm. is that dead of summer, that late June, early July, early August. So we're trying to get out towards the end of the season. At the same time, we don't want to put you there in the fall season where it could be windy and chilly. So uh, the Maritimes goes to wonder this tour is August 25th through September 4th. And we are going to be covering Nova Scotia. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island uh, in St. John's. So this is just absolutely wonderful itinerary. It is busy or it looks busy. But once again, you can see that we have multiple night stays in all the destinations that we're traveling. We have three nights at the front end of our tour in Halifax, Nova Scotia. We're then going to be spending two nights in uh, Baddock in uh, um in uh, the northern part of uh, the uh, of Nova Scotia, we're then going to be doing two nights in Prince Edward Island. And as you can see, there's little dots. Those are ferry rides. So we're traveling by ferry to get from uh, province to province. And then we're going to be making our way to St. John's for two nights stay. And then on the way back in Halifax, just a one night stay, because this is a round trip Halifax. So something to keep in mind over here, day number one is a travel day, nothing planned in Halifax. Our hotel is right in the heart of the downtown area. So after you check in and all of these tours, by the way, no matter what time you get there, check-in time is usually around two o'clock in Europe. It may be an hour later, three o'clock, four in Europe, but for the domestic tours, check-ins around two o'clock. So you'll have an opportunity to have some free time in Halifax to explore this picture-perfect region known as the Canadian Maritimes. We'll venture along its rugged coastline, its pristine beauty, all while getting to know the fun-loving Acadian and Gaelic culture. 
Day number two is your first full day in Halifax, and we're going to kind of venture off. We're going to go see the stunning landscapes. Uh, it's one of the most picturesque spots in all of Canada. It's called Peggy's Cove. And this area contains many of these small little fishing villages, and they're all dotted with these beautiful lighthouses and the right along the Canada's rough Atlantic coastline. So you get these beautiful, memorable views and one of the most photographed areas in all of uh, in all of Canada over here. From there, we're going to bring you back down to Halifax to give you an opportunity to tour the charming uh, uh, capital city here. And you have an opportunity to visit the public gardens, the famous Citadel, which is sits promptly on the hill overlooking the, uh, the city. And then we're going to dine as a welcome dinner together to bring the group together for the first time on day number two. The next day, we're going to go experience a small little fishing village called Maho Bay. And uh, before we're traveling to the lighthouse route towards Lunenburg. So we have a choice on here. Uh, this choice is you're going to have a choice to visit this fisheries museum to see the heritage of the Canada's Maritimes and uh, a lot of the fishing history and culture of uh, the Maritimes and see some of the old wooden boats that are made here to fit or preserved here at the fisheries museum. Or you can make your way to this colorful little town called Lunenburg. It has all this unique architecture and you have an opportunity to kind of walk around if you're not into the fishing industry, the fisheries museum. This is a cool little town in Lunenburg. Um, before the end of the day, we'll bring you back to Halifax. You have dinner on your own, go to the waterfront, walk the promenade over here. It's just a beautiful, peaceful town, especially this time of year. The next day, we're going to be packing our bags and we're going to be making our way to Cape Brennan. Uh, look at this beautiful scenery over here. Uh, we're going to stop at the Millbrook Cultural and Heritage Center to learn about the Micmac. Micmac. Uh, this is the heritage of, uh, of this area. We're going to learn all about um, the heritage of the locals from the Micmac, and you'll learn a little bit about the Micmac language. This is uh, dating back, uh, you know, centuries ago. So from there, we're going to be making our way over the Casno Causeway and uh, making our way to Cape Brennan for a two night stay uh, while we're here. While we're there, we're going to be learning a little bit about the Gaelic language of the area and learn about kilt making uh, or, uh, uh, while we're here. So that is uh, pretty cool to see the garments made. We're gonna play little games of the uh, Gaelic uh, kind of cultural heritage center. So you'll have, this is called a milling frolic. It's a little game that you'll have a chance to play. Uh, from there, we're going to visit the Cabot Trail. Cabot Trails on the northeastern part of uh, the Maritimes over here. So we're going to get set off and explore the Cabot Trail. And you'll fall in love with the rugged landscape and the terrain, with these beautiful, spectacular views of the Atlantic coast. And uh, we're going to stop at this cool little uh, St. Peter's Church in uh, Camp Kietic Camp, uh, which is uh, dating back to 1893. And it overlooks this beautiful harbor. We're going to have a picnic in the park. So we do have a lunch included on this day. We're going to head to uh, the Cape, Bren Cape Brennan Highlands uh, Park, and we're going to have a picnic in the National Park before we make our way to one of these other fishing communities in, uh, in Neal's Harbor. So this whole area is nothing but these small little fishing towns. So we're then going on day number six. We're packing our bags, and we're going to be making our way a little bit uh, on very via ferry to Prince Edward Island. Uh, we're going to stop at the Alexander Graham Bell Museum. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell is credited with the invention of the first telephone in 1876. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the Bell family's personal collection, uh, which uh, with all of his little experience, uh, uh, kind of inventions over here. So we're going to make our way to Prince Edward Island, land cradled by the waves. And while we're there, there's some great dining experiences on this tour, especially if you are a seafood lover. If you are not a seafood lover, there will be other options for you on this tour. But we have, this is a lot of fun. It's a little cooking class uh, to learn how to cook Prince Edward Island mussels. And so you will have a little chef demonstration. And then we have a cook-off where everyone will have a chance to cook their own mussels and see a little tasting to see who wins the certificate with the best mussels. My little eight-year-old will down these muscles. Like, it's crazy to see these, my little child do that. It's nuts. We're a big seafood family over here. So this is a lot of fun going to the uh, culinary boot camp and learn about the uh, Prince Edward muscles and what makes it so important. 
From there, we're going to be making our way to the Anna Green Gables. And uh, we're going to take, you know, past all these sprawling beaches, the red sandstones. It's, uh, it's really a, a cool little area. This is uh, Prince Edward Island National Park. It's this picturesque beach. A little bit different terrain than uh, some of the other beaches we visited on this tour. Here's the Anna Green Gables Museum. This house was built uh, by the relatives of L. Uh, L. M. Montgomery, who refers to the house, the wonder castle of her childhood. So you'll learn all about the influence of Anna Green Gables to the community. From here, we're going to be making our way down to Charlottetown with time to explore this fascinating city in St. John. So we're going to uh, discover the seaside town of Charlottetown, narrow streets lined with quaint little homes and houses. We're going to travel the Confederation Bridge. Uh, this bridge crosses over uh, this beautiful passageway and uh, connects Prince Edward Island to the mainland. We're going to visit Hopewell Rock. These, uh, these iconic rocks, when the tide is low, you can walk down along the rocks. And when the tide is high, sometimes if you Google it, the tide will get up to here. So it completely bare. So we want to time it perfectly. We don't want you to drown yeah. under the hope all rocks. It's first, but this is uh, a new Brunswick icon. It's uh, these flower pot shaped rocks that were carved by the fun day tides over here. So um, they could rise over four stories when the tide is, is in. So uh, we want to make way when the tide is out so you can walk around now you can see it's a little muddy and, and watery, but so bring your galoshes while you're while you're touring. This is pretty cool. From here, we're going to be uh, making our journey down to New Brunswick and to the city of St. John's for a two night stay. And this port city overlooks the Bay of Funday. Uh, we're going to uh, have an awe inspiring drive around the Funday Trail this morning and get these beautiful views of the uh, the coastline and the tides. We're going to uh, um, so this is Dulce. This is, uh, the, there's a, like a seaweed tasting. It's part of their culture. If you want to try that, the seaweed tasting with a little fiddle music, we're going to have a lobster dinner. You know, the, you can kind of see the seafood kind of component of this tour. People love the lobster dinner here. So we're going to, uh, take you to one of the uh, most well-known lobster shacks in all of, uh, uh, New Brunswick and St. John's. We're going to take you to another little fishing village. Uh, called uh, St. Martin. So you'll have an opportunity to visit this little fishing village where, you know, it's just, there's a lot included in the Maritimes. We're going to have a wonderful farewell dinner to kick it all off. This tour packs a punch. It's a little bit of moving around, but what you do notice is there's no one night stays, three nights, two, 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 one, only because we're flying out the next day. The cost of this tour is land air taxes and fees after your $200 booking incentive for brings the price to $4,099 for a double and $5,099 for a single. The triple is $4,099, $4,049. So there is a 200 booking incentive if you book before February 25th. I'm gonna take a little break here because we've covered three tours and I know we may have some questions coming in. Any, any questions about any of the tours, Pacific Northwest, America's Music Cities or the Maritime? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so it's a great question. Um, most of our domestic tours are falling in at a two. Uh, and what that is, it's a scale of two out of five. So domestic tours, you're, we're asking our clients that you need to be able to be on your feet for about an hour at a time to an hour and a half at a time, being able to traverse different kind of pathways. You know, uh, I mean, we're domestic, so we have to abide by for the America's music cities in the Pacific Northwest. You know, different places have ADA regulations because we're in the U.S. for that. Um, but, you know, if there's things that you can't do, then just let the tour manager know. You know what, I'm going to take it easy. You know, when you guys come back, where are we meeting at? But you need to be mobile, uh, you know, walkers, wheelchairs, they're, they're not available for this tour. You have to be able to get onto the bus. You have to be able to get yourself through the airport. Now, that being said, you know, if you have a little knee issues or hip issues, which happen, you know, later on in uh, life a little bit, if you want a little assistance at the airport, I say, by all means, take it, take a little bit of the activity off your body. Plus you usually can make your flights on time a little better when you have some assistance at the airport. Um, but on tour, you know, we have to keep 
the tour going. Everyone's spending a good investment on these tours, and we can't consistently wait for people all the tour. Now, we're not running through the destination. We do have casual walks while we're touring, but the activity level for the domestic tour, is both of those tours are about a two out of five. Um, the Atlantic coast, you could see the different terrain, even though they, you know, it is Canada and they have more modern, you know, access, accessibility areas, but you head down to Hopewell Rocks, you're on the Bay of Funday, you, you know, you're getting out into uh, the seaside areas, you're going from ferries to, you know, to land, you have to be able to traverse that. So it's considered to be a three out of five. And we tend to be on our feet a little bit longer on our three out of five, usually about an hour and a half to two hours at a time. Now, that is not every single day. We're letting people know that you need to be able to kind of handle that. In Europe, for our two European tours, Iceland and uh, and the France Magnifique, you know, it's uneven cobblestone streets. It's uneven terrain. These countries are thousands of years old. So you have to be able to kind of traverse the different terrain of Europe, you know, hotels in France, especially when we're up in the Normandy area, um, they may not have an elevator to get to your room. Now, you don't have to sh schlep your bags up there, but they may not have an elevator to get to your room. So you have to be able to get up to your stuff. I stayed at this chateau. I was in the Queen's Tower and we had to carry our own luggage. And I'm like, oh, lugging it all the way up like seven flights and steps to get to my, but my company doesn't pay for portage for, for us when we travel. So you have to be, you have to be mobile. So I always tell everyone, people ask, you know, when should I do these? When's the best time to go? I tell everyone while well, you can, because there comes a point in time where some of these tours may be a little bit more active than, than you can, but the domestic tours, no different than going to Pittsburgh and walking around Pittsburgh and touring Pittsburgh for a day, but the international ones are going to have a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more to them. Any other questions about those three trips? Well, we will continue. Oh, yes. Oh, I forgot about the microphone. The question was about activity. Sorry, I guess probably someone would have got the point of it. Is it on? Okay. I just wanted to know if you took the uh, early trip to Seattle, mm -hmm. would you still have the transportation to Pittsburgh Airport? You would. Yes, okay. correct. And would there be a connector flight or is that, uh, do we know if that's going to be? So we don't know if that's the case yet. So we do have, I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm in a travel business. This is things that I do know. Uh, we never guarantee flights. We never guarantee seating assignments. We do our best with both, you know, so that is something that we never guarantee. There is one nonstop daily to Seattle on Alaskan Airlines. And that flight was created because of the huge tech industry in Pittsburgh with Carnegie Mellon, University of Pittsburgh, a lot of, you know, major corporations in Pittsburgh. Um, unfortunately, it's not as easy flying back from San Fran because Alaskan Air doesn't have, so we don't split carriers. So chances are it's going to be a connection to Seattle and it will be, and there's only one flight daily back from San Fran, which is United. So you, there's a round trip United Pittsburgh to San Fran, and there's one round trip on Alaskan Airlines to Seattle. So because those two are two different airlines, you will have a connection probably um, at least one way out, possibly two ways out, depending on the airlines that we fly. Any other questions? Yeah, it'd be great if we could do one-way tickets, uh, but it, it's much more cost-effective to, uh, to split them up. Any other questions? Yes, sir. The transportation, where would you pick up the train? That is something for Jacina. Um, I think it's here. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but what about the retirees? I think the way we've done it, the first of all, the end retirees is that we have had people, someone on the tour who has room in their driveway for cars that are when the people are going, and everybody just is not there. So, for example, we have five of us, 33. Mm -hmm. so we just had a, it's a great story. How did you like it? Greece. Yes. Uh, opa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Matt, this is Jacina. I'm on Zoom. Sorry. What was the question? I'm happy to answer it. Parking. 
Um, for hometown pickup. Parking for hometown pickup. I, I didn't hear what Elaine said, but I can tell you what I do is I work with the group and usually it's at somebody's home. Somebody offers their there. home and parking in their parking lot. Yeah. Does car detailing come with that? <laughs> that you would have to ask the people who choose to park there. <laughs> All right. So hopefully that helps you out. Yeah. Greece is spectacular. It is so busy, though. It's unbelievable how many people are traveling to Greece right now. It's the busiest destination globally right now is uh, is Greece. So, um, all right. On the now the busiest. Oh, yes, ma'am. You're from Nova, Nova Scotia? Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so it is a gorgeous. They got hit pretty hard with a. Yeah, they got hit with a uh, pretty bad hurricane, you know, uh, recently, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. So, you know, and, and that's just the, the way we're living anymore. We pick up and we kind of plow through it and move on. Thank you for that. Um, the Now, the next busiest place starting next year will be France. France is... It's unbelievable. If uh, I'm so glad we have space, but I feel like I'm talking to God behind me. But I feel like we have um, so happy we have space uh, on this program because we're like completely out of group space for all of our France tours for next year. Uh, we have the Olympics going on in uh, in France. We have the 80th anniversary of D Day that is in 2024. This is not an anniversary tour because we have an anniversary tour that. It's pretty much all sold out for next year, which we're, you know, doing London and then crossing over the English Channel like they did, you know, on June 6th and 44. Um, but this tour, I like it a little better than our Memorials of World War because it's encompassing more of France. So uh, this is our French Magnifique. Uh, I just did this tour in November and absolutely loved it. I've been to France several times. It's October 3rd through the 14th. Once again, we're getting into that little off season, but I would expect this to be busy still in uh, in October. It's 12 days, 10 nights, and includes 16 meals, 10 breakfasts, one lunch, and five dinners. If you want to go in uh, a little bit early, we can you know do so. If you want to stay a little bit later, we can do that as well. Uh, the early part, I don't think is as necessary because we're not staying in Paris at the beginning of the trip. We're staying in Versailles, which is a little outside of Paris to start this program. And then at the end of the tour, post nights are fantastic for this program. In Paris, you can continue on your program and have some free time. You could spend an entire week in Paris and not even scratch the surface of its offerings over here. So as you see, multiple night stays across the board. We're going to be doing uh, two nights in, uh, in Versailles. We're then going to be making our way up to the Normandy region and staying in the town of Caen. Uh, from there, we're going to be making our way to St. Malo and then down into the Loire Valley, staying in this beautiful chateau and then two nights in Paris. So uh, once again, this is a level three and I will just read the level three to, uh, to everyone to give them a better understanding. A level three means you're an on-the-go traveler. You don't want to miss a thing. So walking or standing for longer periods of time, such as one or two hours, is not a big deal. You can navigate hills, uneven ground, climb into various modes of transportation, such as tuk-tuks, cable cars, heading down the, uh, the, the, the underground stairs, like for the subways, Zodiacs, etc. You can possibly anticipate changes in elevation. Not so much on this trip. You can expect some longer days balanced with some free time to recharge out. So it's something to keep in mind. The most unique sightseeing um, on this location, especially in historic areas such as Le Mont, some, uh, Le Mont Saint Michel, Saint Malo, villages of Chillon and Ambrose, uh, on your comfort. Yeah. So this this is normal Europe. There's nothing crazy about this other than uh, we may tour via the metro, um, which means you have to get down the metro stairs and then hop on because. Motor coaches in Paris are the pits. They really are. Uh, you know, there's times you'll look on a map and it'll be like, oh, it's a mile away. If it's me, I'm like, I'm just walking. And on a bus, that mile could take you an hour. And I mean, it's crazy 
to uh, to see how the traffic is around Paris. So we start this tour with round trip flights to Paris. There are no nonstops to Paris anymore out of Pittsburgh. Uh, to uh, Some people think that Delta flight still exists. We only have a nonstop to uh, the UK right now internationally, and it's not daily, but we used to have a round trip nonstop to, uh, to Paris. So day number one is your overnight flight. Day number two, we're going to arrive in Paris. Someone will be waiting for you after you go through customs and immigration, and we will transfer you from Paris to, uh, to Versailles. Uh, your tour begins at the Royal Borough of Versailles. We're going to celebrate the beginning of your voyage with a savory French dinner in the culinary rich town of Versailles. Versailles is opulent. I mean, it is just in your face. We're going to start our next day, day number three of the tour, day number one, overnight flight, day number two, arrival, welcome dinner. Day number three, we're going to explore the iconic palace of King Louis the Fourteenth. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This tour will include both a tour of the palace as well as the palace grounds and beautiful gardens of Versailles. Uh, so you will have some time to explore independently of these beautiful formal gardens and the spectacular Baroque fountains all over the place. Day number four, we're going to be waking up and we're going to be making our way to Normandy. On route to Normandy, we're getting a little bit more so you can send us off to the Master Gardeners of West Virginia while you're at it too, because we're going to visit the beautiful gardens of Monet at Giverny. So we're, these are Monet's gardens. This is where Monet spent a good part of his life. So you will have an opportunity to visit Monet's gardens. We're going to stroll through these colorful living works of art. From there, we're going to be making our way up to Caen for a two-night stay. While we're in the Normandy region, we're then going to visit the uh, Omaha Beach that morning. So we're going to take our way out. We're going to visit the site of the largest invasion in the history of uh, the world, at the Battle of uh, Normandy in World War II. Uh, this is the D-Day landing site, originally called Operation Overlord, and it involved over 150,000 Allied troops, and it's believed that nearly 4 million landmines were placed in the Normandy by the Nazis, which is just unbelievable. We're going to head out on the beaches, of uh, Normandy. We're going to visit the American Cemetery uh, and Visitor Center, which is a truly humbling. I've been to Paris a little less than a dozen times. My first time to Normandy was in, uh, not Paris, I've been to France about two dozen or about a dozen times, but I never made it up north. I always did Paris South, Paris South. Uh, and I finally had a chance to go to Norm, and it is just a humbling, humbling experience. It really is. So we're going to give you some time to walk around the uh, um, American Cemetery. There's a wonderful museum there to, to go stroll around. Uh, it, it's pretty uh, crazy. There's uh, nearly 10,000 soldiers uh, are buried here. So we'll give you some free time. There's a great museum in Caen where we'll take you to, uh, to learn a little bit more about um, the Battle of Normandy over here. So we'll walk through pont a uh, This is a ranger memorial, and this is where the 2nd Ranger Battalion scaled 100-foot cliffs uh, to uh, to go and try to seize the fortified entry positions here of the Nazis. So this overlooks Omaha Beach, which is just incredible. From there, we're going to be making our way to saint marie Anglaise, and this is where the Airborne Museum is. This is really interesting because you head in here and you'll see the decoys. Like there's little parachutes with just miniature like dolls attached to the parachutes, and they just sent out thousands of these parachutes like on one part of the, you know, uh, village so that the, uh, so the Nazis would go and try to uh, think all the parachuters were coming on here while they were parachuting. So you'll see the blow up uh, Jeeps and the blow up balloon, uh, uh, tanks that were just literally, you know, pumped up with air that were just fake, that they were all decoys and they would land in a field and they would reposition all their troops. A lot of that is right here. It's absolutely amazing. Um, we'll head down in to learn a little bit about Mulberry Harbor, the uh, harbor that was built uh, out in the uh, Atlantic Ocean to be able to transport, you know, all of our armaments and supplies, which is cool. And the, the harbors are still there today. Not, And you could go walk around the harbors. Once again, you know, you're going to walk on sandy beaches. But these two days are very memorable. We're going to make our way, as I mentioned, at Con Pisa Memorial Museum. You could spend an entire day in its museum reading everything. It is a guided tour. 
We have these little headsets. They're called whispers. You put little earpieces in your uh, ear, a little radio around your neck, and the tour manager will just speak to you. And if you don't want to hear them anymore, you just pull them out and do your own reading. So uh, I, I have about a, an hour in me to to listen, and then it just becomes like Charlie Brown, you know, wah, 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 wah. Well, it's so uh, it's, it's just with my attention span over here. But some people are captivated, you know, by it. I like to sit and read a lot of the uh, um, stories that are there. It is, it's just humbling. This is a lot of fun. It's, uh, it, it's a, an interesting area. From there, we're going to be packing our bags from Con. We're gonna be making our way to San Malo. Uh, this is Brittany's famous coastal village. Uh, we're gonna take in the beautiful beaches, the striking blue waters of San Malo, this old fortified town. The city was founded in the first century BC. So it gives you an understanding of how old uh, some of these places are. You'll have an opportunity uh, to visit Le Mont Saint Michel, which is pretty cool. You can go there by foot, certain times of the day, and then later on that day when high tides are in, it's an island. It's uh, it's pretty cool. So we're going to visit the Mont Saint Michel. This is uh, uh, resting on the border between Normandy and Brittany, and the world famous pilgrim site uh, sits on the edge of the sea and becomes an island during uh, high tides. Uh, this is where you'll have an opportunity to tour Mont Saint-Michel. So this is a really cool area to spend two nights. Uh, we're going to return to San Malo that evening to enjoy some time at leisure. From there, we're going to be packing our bags and making our way to the Loire Valley. This region is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, brimming with all these beautiful French chateaus and parks and the setting of the French court and it's situated right in central France. It's a valley home to these beautiful fertile grounds. France is enormous and you just pass by farmland. It's crazy how much farmland in the states that they have over here. World famous vineyards. Uh, it covers over 300 square miles and you can find vineyards and fruit groves. By the way, up in Normandy, uh, you'll find a lot of apple orchards uh, and they have this wonderful brandy called Calvados. It's an apple brandy, which is great or apple cider if you're not into brandy i'm into brandy so there we go fantastic um we're going to welcome uh we'll arrive into this tiny little village called uh Chion, and it's right on the banks of the vanny river and it holds a castle of king Henry the second so we stop here for a little tour of the city and then you have some free time to go shop in all the little boutique uh shops it's a really cool little site uh, from here, we're going to, oh, uh, this is still Xion over here. Um, we're going to make our way out to a local uh, marketplace. We're going to, you know, it's always nice to stop at the local markets. I always find the heartbeats of the towns and the communities and the countries are right in kind of like our strip district here in Pittsburgh. You know, you walk through and see all the little taste of the region. If you're out in the Philadelphia area, they have a this thing called Reading Terminal. If you've never been to you know, that's the heartbeat of, of Philadelphia. Um, so we're going to stop at this beautiful winery and have a wonderful uh, wine tasting uh, with this beautiful, uh, you know, lunch over here. This is our our, uh, our our chateau for two nights. I stayed in that little dome at the very, that's where I schlepped my, my 50 pound luggage all the way up to the Queen's Castle. And I checked in and she's like, "Ooh, you're in the Queen's room. I said, well, this is fantastic. I like their private elevator to get me here. So that was not the case, but this is a wonderful chateau. No elevator in this building, but you don't have to schlep your luggage, but this is gorgeous. This is where we had our uh, black tie affair for our awards banquet, which was absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we will uh, have a complete kind of access to the grounds over here. It's a wonderful experience, uh, especially when you're in France. So you'll have, you know, wonderful uh, dining experience here. Now, our chateau is nice, but it's not as nice as Chateau de Chenonsu, which we will be visiting later on on the next day, on day number nine. So we'll be touring this beautiful chateau, which is surrounded by a moat, which is pretty cool. So this is uh, a wonderful experience. This would have been a nice stay, that is for sure. Um, but it's uh, it initially started as a mill, but was rebuilt into a castle. And half of the castle was expanded over a bridge sitting directly over top of this little river over here. So it's a, just wonderful. And the time of year you're going, you will see all of this uh, flora out as well. So it, it's a really cool chateau, uh, Chenonsu. From there, we're going to be making our way to this picturesque town 
called Emboise, and we're going to have some free time to explore. We had a wonderful lunch here. Uh, while other, we actually found there's a little uh, wine cellar, so we went and had a little wine tasting. They just kept pouring and pouring and pouring, and then we're like, let's get some food. Then we went to a little uh, a little cafe while we're here, and then that is before making our route back to uh, the city of lights, Paris, just a spectacular city. Uh, the French capital and uh, just beautiful. We're going to uh, have a scenic uh, cruise on the Seine River. So this is a wonderful dinner cruise right on the Seine. So you will pass by all the iconic sites. Uh, oh, no, this is, sorry, this is just a cruise on the Seine River. My apologies, um, which you get a chance to pass through all the iconic sites. This evening is an evening at leisure. If you're interested, there's an optional tour the Pierre de Laton. It's a cabaret. Quite a bit of nudity. I will let everyone know on this. I see people signing up already, but uh, it is, uh, I do want to set the proper expectation for people. It's part of the Parisian culture. It's a very interesting show. Um, it's fun. It, you know, you're talking to your friends and fellow travelers. And then before you know it, there's naked people all around you. So uh, just something to, uh, honestly, I can't believe we offer it. It's, uh, it's, we were all sitting there like, oh, what is going on in here? But it did make for good conversation later on that evening. That is for sure. But our clients like it. it it's a lot of fun. It's part of their culture. So, you know, that's why we offer it as an option because we brought everyone there i just had a big church group and she's like can you build that in i'm like i don't think that's a good idea um that went and she's like no we're fine i'm like i still think you should keep it as an option i said i don't want to be responsible for uh people you know never showing up for church again so um <laughs> later on the next day it's really uh your choice you could take in the amazing sights of paris on a panoramic city tour with a local guide see the arch de triomphe see the Champs um, Notre Dame Cathedral, which is in the process of getting, you know, rebuilt, or you could step into the shoes of a local and navigate Paris on the metro. That's what I mean. We're trying. We're either doing it kind of uh, on uh, on foot through the metro or the panoramic tour. If you are mobile, choose the metro. I promise you, you won't, you know, uh, be disappointed because you can get from one part of Paris to the next to the next. Uh, very easily instead of spending your day on the motor coach. So uh, that evening you're going to, or that afternoon you're going to have a free day, and then that evening we're going to uh, to get together for a wonderful dinner um, at the Eiffel Tower. So that we use some tours. We do a uh, Sin River dinner. It's hard to keep them all straight. Some tours we eat at the base of the Eiffel Tower in a uh, in a bistro. But this tour, we dine in the Eiffel Tower, and we try to plan it around sunset, and it is a spectacular dinner. It really is, but it requires a little nicer uh, attire for this. I mean, keep in mind, all of our tours are very uh, casual dressed, um, so we don't require anything, but this dinner is super nice. So um, if you're interested in traveling on this tour, you do need a passport. Um, you also have to apply for a visa. Um, in Europe in 2024, there is a visa that you will need to uh, apply for. It's called the ETIAS. Uh, it's honestly, you're not from Pennsylvania, but we've had this real ID thing that we've been trying to deliver, which makes our driver's license able to fly. It's been going on for like five years where it just keeps getting delayed. This ETIAS visa has been delayed and delayed and delayed, and now it's finally taking place. So there's a region of Europe called the Schengen region countries, which kind of gives people free reign to travel from one country to the next. Starting in 2024, any American traveling to a Schengen country, Italy, France, Iceland, uh, Spain, Portugal, Greece, all these European countries, you're going to have to have a visa to travel there. Uh, the visa is going to be fairly cheap, $10, $15. It's going to have a time, you know, uh, lapse of about 90 days. So uh, it's just, it's a moneymaker. I mean, that's really what it's all coming down to, but you will need that for France moving on into 2024. Um, if you're interested, go here and register. The price of this tour, it's a 12 day tour, uh, 10 nights. We have five, two night stays. If you want to stay later, uh, we can. I don't think we're offering pre-nights on this, but if you want to stay later, 
in Paris, we can extend you. The price of this trip is land, air, taxes, fees, transfers from here to the airport to Pittsburgh. For those of you, and we offer, uh, uh, I think it's uh, transfers from Charleston to the Charleston airport, and it's a little bit more expensive of a tour, but the price of this trip normally is uh, $5,099, 5099 for a double. Singles are $6,299. And then we have a $200 off booking incentive. The $200 off will bring you down to $4,899 double and $6,099 single. We need to have bookings before April 4th of 2024. Um, you could deposit today. It's $698. The insurance for this trip is $449. It's $100 more for our trips to Europe. So the insurance is $449. So $1147 holds your spot on this trip. And that $1147 is fully refundable until April 4th. So if you deposit now, you can guarantee your spot and you could cancel before April 4th, you get everything back. If you cancel after April 4th, you get everything back, less your insurance up until the day prior. To deposit. So um, France is booming for next year. Uh, there's a lot going on. Like I mentioned, 80th anniversary, Olympics. And you could say, I'm going there in a couple months as you're watching the Olympics, which is exciting. Now, this tour is a little bit different. This is our number one selling tour in our company. Uh, the reason I say this is different um, is we are going to be motor coaching everyone from here to Washington Dulles Airport. So we are going to pick you up and we're going to bus you all the way to D.C. And the reason for that is we are able to save a significant amount of money by traveling out of Pittsburgh. And it's a nonstop flight from Dallas to the capital city of Reykjavik. So this is not going out of Pittsburgh. This is going out of Dallas. And it, here's why. Um, Iceland Air is really the only nonstops to Iceland. Uh, there's a couple others, but they're the predominant airline carrier to travel to Iceland. And none of the airlines coach share with Iceland Air, which means that if you fly out of Pittsburgh or Charleston, um, you are going to have to then claim your luggage when you arrive either in Dallas or JFK or Newark or Boston, where Iceland Air flies out of. So you'll have to go get, you'll have to pay for your luggage because it's domestic flight. You have to get your luggage, and then you have to go check back in to Iceland there. Um, hopefully, your luggage is there. You know, that, these are the kind of crazy things that go on nowadays. So we're eliminating all of that. We're going to take you to Dallas. It's an evening flight, so you don't have to leave here super early, maybe like noon, you know, to get to your airport, because we always like to get people to the airports about three hours ahead of time. But it's a nonstop flight. It is fantastic. Here's the other thing. What's really nice about this tour is your hotel is ready upon arrival because you're going to arrive around 6, 630 in the morning. And normally we started touring once you arrive after your international flight. Um, but now your hotel will be ready upon arrival. You could go freshen up. You could take a little cat nap. You wake up and we have an early afternoon city tour of Reykjavik. And then we get together for a welcome dinner. So it's a nice relaxing. Now, if you want to go in early, you can. We will still provide transportation from here to Dallas. However, your hotel won't be ready upon arrival if you do a pre-night. It's part of our standard tour package for that hotel to be ready. So the Northern Lights, I send more people on this tour than almost any other tour in the company. We operate it one or two days, one or two times a day from October 1st all the way through the end of March. So we literally have a departure going every day of the week, sometimes two a day from October all the way to the end of March. It is a booming area for Colette. We were one of the first companies to start touring Iceland many years ago, and we were able to really secure some great partnerships. Why do you go to Iceland, especially in the wintertime? This is why you go to Iceland in the wintertime, uh, to see the Aurora Borealis. Um, it is more prevalent October through March. That is why we call this tour the Iceland's Magical Northern Lights. And that's why we offer it during that time of year. When are the Northern Lights most prevalent? They are most prevalent towards the winter solstice. So the closer you get to December and January, they're the most prevalent. We are leaving in November. November is a very good month for us for Iceland. We have a lot of success there. 
but it is mother nature. We don't control mother nature. You go to Alaska, you hope to see Mount McKinley. Do you see it? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, it is unpredictable. What we try to do is put a wonderful tour together, highlighting this wonderful country, and then Northern Lights are a cherry on top of a wonderful tour. So we hope to give you an opportunity to see the Northern Lights. That's why we're doing it this time of year. Uh, it's also the shortest your plane flight that you can have. It's about five hours, five and a half hours from Washington Dulles to Reykjavik. So it is an easy flight uh, for our people. So this tour has breakfast daily and has dinner every day. So this is no options. So this is a very inclusive tour, nonstop flight, round trip transportation to the airport, breakfast daily, dinner daily. It's a wonderful tour. Uh, so it's departing November 9th through the 15th, um, seven days, five nights. The tour is going to begin with an overnight flight. We're going to arrive in the capital city of Reykjavik for a one night stay. Then we're going to be spending three nights on the south central part of the island in a town called Vik. Vik has less than a thousand residents. It is a little seaside town. It's grown in popularity because of tour companies, basically. The reason we do that is we're trying to get off the motor coach. We try in our best of best ways as a company to not keep people on a motor coach every day, all day long. So by, by staying in this south central part, we can hit the eastern part of the island without having these long travel days back and forth to Reykjavik, back and forth. Also, there's nothing going on in V. So we're away from all the ambient lighting. So because there's not a lot of ambient lighting, our opportunities to see the Northern Lights are highly increased. So it's one night in Reykjavik, one, three nights in Vik, one night back in Reykjavik at the end of this tour. This is also a level three, as we mentioned before with France. So day number one is your overnight flight. You're going to arrive into Reykjavik. You will check into your hotel. You will rest, you will get freshened up, and we are going to go out for a tour of Reykjavik. It's the capital city of Iceland. It is designated a UNESCO World Heritage City of Literature. Um, it is also the most northern capital city in the entire world. It has a population of around 300 uh, residents. Uh, it's the first non-native English speaking city to receive the title of the UNESCO World City of Literature. We're going to go out and get acquainted with this beautiful city. See the beautiful church. Is that in this photo? You can see, uh, no, you don't see the church. The Hell's Grimskirt Church, which is this beautiful uh, church. that's the highest part of Reykjavik, the highest building in Reykjavik, which was designed over uh, some of the, you know, geological wonders of the region are these beautiful volcanic, uh, um, you know, uh, calderas and, and mountain peaks. And this church kind of goes up into a, a peak. Uh, it's the land of fire and ice. A lot of geothermal activity. They're completely self-sufficient uh, with energy. A lot of renewable um, between wind and uh, solar, as well as uh, hydropower. In fact, they overproduce the renewable energies and sell it back to Europe, but it is a small country. So they're not consuming a lot of uh, renewables. But uh, this parliament building was dating back to 1796, a rich Viking heritage in this area as well. So we're gonna have a comprehensive tour around Reykjavik, learn all about the region. We're gonna get together for a welcome dinner in Reykjavik. After we get together for a welcome dinner, we're gonna board a ship and do a harbor cruise at night. We're going on this cruise to get away from Reykjavik. So we're getting away from that ambient lighting of the city with hopes to see the wonderful Aurora Borealis. By the way, there are times where you cannot see this with the naked eye, but if you take a photo, it'll appear in your photo. So it's very strange how the Northern Lights uh, will appear. So if you have those SLR cameras, they will come in handy if you have a tripod because it has to keep the lens open. I used my iPhone and had a little a little stand for my iPhone and it, it worked great. So there's apps that'll, you know, configure your camera to uh, take wonderful pictures of the Northern Lights. The next day we're packing our bags and we're going to travel the incredible Golden Circle, which is a route that encompasses many of the island's most renowned natural wonders. This is Iceland. 
you need to be prepared. It's like going to a West Virginia game in November. We're going to have similar kind of climates over here. You're looking at temperatures in the, you know, mid thirties, low forties is a high, uh, but we're going to be out and about. And if you ask someone what the weather will be like in Iceland, they'll always tell you, wait five minutes and I'll let you know, because it does change. They don't get the abundance of snow, although there's these photos have uh, some snow photos, but there's a lot of waterfall visits that we have here. And some of these, you have an opportunity. You may not be able to see it from back here, but these are all steps all the way out here. You don't have to do that. That's like a level five. You know, this is a level three. You can enjoy the waterfall back here. But if you want to hike behind the falls, you can do that as well. So something to keep in mind, you can make this tour uh, your own a little bit here. So we're going to kind of traverse this wonderful golden circle. We're going to visit Geyser uh, and admire the hot springs of Stroker Geyser. By the way, Geyser is the only word in the English language, Icelandic language, that translates to English. So uh, this is kind of like our old faithful right here. It shoots up 90 feet uh, to 150 feet, and you could time it every six to 10 minutes. So this is a, uh, a kind of a natural wonder over here. We're going to visit Gulfos Waterfall, a stunning 100-foot double cascading falls. Gulfos means golden falls. And if it's sunny while you're visiting here, many times you'll see these beautiful rainbows overlooking Gulfos Waterfalls. We're going to visit Thingvellir National Park. Thingvellir National Park is the nation's most historic area, and it's a UNESCO-protected World Heritage Site. And here, Icelanders gathered in 930 A.D., to uh, establish the world's first parliament. So right here in Thingvellir National Park is where they gathered to create the first parliament. Uh, right here in Thingvellir National Park, this is a cool area uh, because this is where North America meets Europe. So this is where the two tectonic plates of the continents meet. And there are people that travel to Iceland to scuba dive so that they could touch North America and Europe at the same time. Not part of our trips, so just keep that in mind, not part of our trips. From there, you'll uh, have an opportunity to visit the Lava Expedition Center. This kind of gives you the story of uh, how people lived in Iceland with this crazy volcanic activity that's going on. Uh, the most recent big volcanic that erupted was Ayofalo Yoko, uh, which was in April of 2011. And I only remember that because I had people traveling on our Holland Tulip River cruise in April to go see the windmills and Kuchenhof Gardens and all the tulips. And I remember here getting a call from my group leader that was just, oh my goodness, because this volcano shut down air traffic for almost a week over the Atlantic Ocean. And they're like, what are we going to do? And I'm like, well, you have insurance. I do. And I'm like, we're going to be here for a week. I said, well, you don't have to pay for it. Enjoy your week. Stay in Amsterdam, you know, just... So, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy, but Iceland built themselves up from the bootstraps from this crazy volcanic eruption. Also, Iceland really was completely devastated with the financial uh, collapse of 2009. I mean, the country was in shambles and they prosecuted all their bankers. All they, they all went to jail for, you know, all this fraudulent activity that they were doing with mortgages and different things. And they brought their, their island around tourism. And tourism brought this island back to, uh, back to life. And now it's one of the most visited places per capita in the entire world. So they are doing really well. Everyone, for the most part, will speak English. You know, you'll get a chance to try to speak some Icelandic. It's not easy. I've been presenting on Iceland for many years, and I still can't touch on any of these words. Uh, but it's a fascinating culture, and they're very friendly people, and the food is wonderful. Uh, so you'll learn a little bit about here at the Volcanic Expedition, Expedition Center. Uh, from here, we're going to be making our way to Seljanodos Falls. Uh, this is, a, once again, a beautiful waterfall, uh, providing you with this wonderful walkway behind the falls. to get these photos from behind the falls. This is Vic. I mean, it's a party town if you ever see it. You know, it's 1,000 people. Uh, our hotel here, we always pride ourselves in getting people out into local restaurants uh, for dining, but we will be dining at the hotel uh, for three nights. It's a big buffet. You can't eat, possibly eat the same thing twice, you know, in those three nights. It, there's a lot of different options, but it's really the only game in town while we're here 
in uh, in B. So uh, from there, we're going to be making our way to Rhinos de Fiera. Uh, this is the Black Sand Beach, the Black Sand Volcanic uh, Beach over here. The people sometimes think of uh, Iceland with the puffin birds, which is their national bird. They are not around in the wintertime. So there will be some marine life. There will be some bird life, but uh, the puffins are not around. This is the uh, uh, the former, the black uh, Gilmont bird over here. We'll give you a chance to see dry hole leaf, this natural uh, natural uh, archway uh, into the uh, into the harbor over here, which is uh, about 120 feet above uh, the waterway. We're going to visit uh, Skogar Museum. Skogar Museum is really a museum that will talk about what life is like in Iceland in more primitive times. You can see the thatched roofs keep the buildings warm in the winter, cool in the summer. You'll have different you know, uh, museums to walk into to see primitive tools and ways they cooked. And it's kind of interesting to see what life was like in, uh, in, in Iceland in more primitive times. We'll visit Skogus Falls. Uh, it's one of Iceland's largest waterfalls. It has a width of about 82 feet and it drops over 200 feet. This is why we go to Iceland. We're going to make our way to uh, um, a local glacier, Iceland's fourth largest glacier, if you'd see the word. Trust me, you don't want to pronounce it. But every night after dinner, we are going to give you an opportunity to go out and see the Northern Lights. So the tour manager may say, hey, I looked at the weather report. A lot of this is based on clear, dry skies. And the tour manager will say, I looked at the weather report, where we're at now. But if we drive 40 minutes north, you know, we may be able to see the Northern Lights uh, a little bit more visible. If you want to come with us, you know, you're more than welcome to come with and we're going to go out and search for the northern lights and this is what we hope to see you know the beautiful dazzling aurora borealis i remember when i was there we were waiting you know for the northern lights and all of a sudden i'm looking on this app and they're all over michigan i'm like i came all the way to iceland and hell in michigan are you kidding me uh so each night we're going to go out and uh, try for the northern lights on day number five we're going to wake up pack our bags we're making our way back to beak uh, on route, or no, uh, day number five, we're still in Beak. Uh, we're going to make our way to the eastern part of the island, and we're going to be visiting uh, uh, um, Skatbell National Park. It's the largest national park in all of Europe, and we're going to marvel at this beautiful alpine kind of scenery, those alpine vistas. We're going to make our way to Yoko Larsen Lagoon. Uh, this lagoon is a glacier lagoon, so you'll just see floating icebergs all around the lagoon. Sometimes people will pull them in and chip little ice cubes out of them and bring them back to their hotel in Beak and pour a little whiskey over a glass of, uh, of iceberg ice over here, but it is gorgeous. This is one of the funnest parts of this entire trip is heading out to Yoko Larsen Lagoon, uh, maybe get to see some marine life while we're at it, hopefully get to see some of the northern lights while we're there. We're going to be making our way back to Beak. We're going to stop at the uh, um, uh, Reykjanes Peninsula. Uh, this is known for its kind of rugged coast, lava fields, numerous hot springs. The most famous of the hot springs is the Blue Lagoon. So we'll have a chance to go soak those achy bones in the Blue Lagoon uh, before we make our way back. So you have to go in, you shower um, because you want to get off the impurities. And if you did your hair, you know, the oils that are in your hair. So you go and shower and then you go in the Blue Lagoon. And we have a few hours to kick back and relax in these thermal hot springs that uh, some of the hot springs will get up to like 103, 105. And, you know, some of them will be a little cooler. You can order some drinks and kick back and relax. It's a party in the Blue Lagoon. So uh, from there, we make our way back to Reykjavik, have some free time, a little retail therapy at the end. Have a wonderful farewell dinner, bringing everyone together. And keep in mind, we're going to pick you up and bring you back home, back to Morgantown when you arrive into uh, Dallas. So this tour, once again, you can go on. It's hosted by the Ali program. You can get the, uh, the links above. Uh, it's a great rate. So it's land, air, taxes, and fees. Uh, transfers from the airports to the hotel. It is coming in at $36.99 per person double. That is after a $250 booking incentive. Uh, the regular rate of the trip is $39.49, but after your booking incentive is $36.99 double, $42.99 single, and $36.49 for a triple. 
You need to book this before May 10th. I think we have 24 seats for this one, if I'm not mistaken, but it's great because you know you're going to have that nonstop flight. So this includes your hometown pickup, any of these tours. If you're interested in going in early or staying later, please, you know, let the Ollie or uh, Colette know or the retirees know, and we'll get you a quote for that. And we will also honor that hometown pickup. If you're interested in business class air, we can try to accommodate that request as well. If you want to, you know, have any, there's no real extension on any of these tours, like post door extension, but the pre nights and post nights are there. There's very few options on any of these tours. As we mentioned before, the insurance is canceled for any reason at any time up until the day prior to departure, and you get a full cash refund back uh, while you're on tour. It protects you for trip interruption, travel delays, illness, accident, theft, emergency evacuation. The domestic insurance is $349 per person, um, and the international is $449 per person, and it's due at the time of deposit. This is confusing. It just came out. I'm still learning it. It just came out in uh, September. We have a new passport club. To try to get through this one with memory over here. So we have two levels of our passport club. One is an adventurer and one is an explorer. An explorer is someone who has completed three or more collect tours. So if you are an explorer, you get an added benefit if, for being a past client of ours that has completed quite a few trips with Colette. Um, that added benefit is a $100 credit to go towards any optional tours, any pre-nights, post-nights, business class air, premium economy air, and it's per person. That has nothing to do with our adventure club. Our adventure is someone who has never traveled or who's only completed one tour with Colette but hasn't got to the Explorer level. Now, if you are a past traveler of Colette and you've just come home from Greece uh, and you do another trip with Colette within 12 months, you would then earn 5% off of the cost of what your previous tour cost. So for instance, what's your name, ma'am? Bev. So Bev decides to go to Iceland. Well, not a good, not a good example. But Bev decides to maybe go to France with Colette. Bev just came back from Greece. Greece's trip was $6,000, but the land rate was $4,000. Bev would save 5% of the $4,000 she paid off of Greece to go towards her savings off of her new tour to France. So it's a 5% savings for if you travel with Colette within 12 months and a 3% savings if you travel with Colette within 13 to 24 months. And if you've never traveled or outside of 24 months, then your clock would then start. And then the adventure or the Explorer credit would be in addition to the savings. So it's our way of just saying thank you. So you have your, uh, your past traveler credit. You uh, also have these little booking incentives, as I mentioned earlier. For the domestic trips, you have to sign up not with a Pennsylvania license plate, but our, our driver's license, but you have to sign up with a legal form of identification. Your reservation has to match however you are traveling. So if you're doing a domestic tour and you're using your driver's license, your reservation has to match how your driver's license reads. My driver's license and my passport don't match up with my name. So if I'm flying just with my driver's license, I have to make sure that I just use my driver's license. If I'm flying with my passport, I have to make sure that I'm signing up with Matthew E. DeRamo on my passport. If you're a junior, a senior, a third, a second, that is how you need to sign up uh, because the airlines need your name to match exactly how your identification matches. Personally, I travel with my passport no matter where I go so that I don't screw it up. So um, so if you're traveling domestically, you will need a lease to driver's license. Internationally, you will need a passport. Your passport needs to be valid eight months be before your return home date. So for any of these tours that are traveling international, France, or uh, Iceland, eight months prior. This is the ETIS visa. You will also need it for, uh, for, uh, for Iceland as well, because Iceland is part of the Schengen countries. As I mentioned, we will provide you information with what you need to do. You will go to a website, you will grab your passport information, you will put your passport information into this website, 
you will put your credit card in to pay for it. And then you get your visa that you will print out or scan it and keep it in your email and show them upon arrival. This is necessary for most of Europe right now, traveling in 2024. Uh, for any of these tours, you know, uh, just go to the web link and you can register for these trips. And this is what I was talking about earlier. People always ask, when's the best time to go, Matt? With the weather, what's the weather? What's the crowds like? What's... And I said, don't worry about any of that. It's while you can. It truly is that things happen uh, on these tours. I'm going to play one little short video before we wrap it up and answer any last questions you have. Hey kids, hey kids. That's, that's again. That's again. Look who's joined, Look who's joined us. us. Your aunt and, your aunt uncle. and uncle. They've decided They've to spend your inheritance. inheritance. One cup at a time. Hear it. Hear it. Far, far back heel. You gotta love, gotta it. love it. And look, and look. Aaron came Aaron up came with a wonderful idea. idea. Why, waste Why waste our money, our money just, just on coffee, coffee when we can have, have cappuccino? <laughs> love ya. Love ya. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, they're living their best life over here. So um, the Ollie program, it, Justina takes all the reservations for the Ollie tours. The Ollie tours for this are your France, your Iceland tour, and your... Pacific Northwest. Um, so you would contact Jacina for those three trips. Um, the tours for the West Virginia retirees, you could contact Colette and book directly with Colette, contacting the 800 number on the screen. And all you would have to do is refer to the booking number of the tour if you don't feel comfortable going onto that group webpage and registering yourself. Um, with that being said, any questions out here? I know we've kept you. We've had a long, a lot of tours. Usually we only present one tour. Uh, we had a whole tour series for 2024, but any questions for any of these trips? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Well, Jacina, thank you very much for having me. West Virginia Ollie, or retirees, thank you for... Uh, for uh, another uh, wonderful opportunity to, to work with you guys. And if you have any personal questions about anything else, I will be up here just kind of packing everything up. So come on up and uh, you know, ask away, but we'd love to have you as clients and get out there and travel while you can. Thank you very much.